you know, it's a tremendous honor, but at the end of the day, I could care less about that. You know, I don't, I don't really care about trophies. I care about championships, and that's the same thing that this entire team cares about. So, uh, you know, it's a tremendous honor, but we're going to still focus on our goals and, you know, getting better every single day. There he is, J.J. McCarthy. Welcome in on this Monday. The question was, hey, J.J., you're the front runner for the Heisman Trophy now. And as you would expect, Jim Scarcelli, uh, you know, he's more interested in rings instead of individual accomplishments. Not a bad thing to hear if you're a Michigan fan after a 49-0 route with your quarterback playing the way he did and uh, being moved up along with the team being as the, the favorite for the, the national championship, the quarterback being put up there for the, the favorite is the Heisman. Now, a lot of a lot of accolades was still a month ago, you know, rolling Michigan's way. That's great. He he deserves it. It's a you know, it's really a team award. You got to you know, you got to be a good player uh, you know, on a good team. And it's become a, more or less a quarterback award, you know. But, uh, hey, that would be great. He would be number four for us. and. Uh, Got to keep winning, man. Got to keep winning. And he knows how to spread the wealth. And, you know, Coach Harbaugh is saying, hey, individual accomplishments, they come with team accomplishments. When we all when we all win, when the team wins, we all win. Getting real quick, I when we had some good teams when I was coaching, I used to walk into those all league meetings where you get to pick your players and you're, you know, you're 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 saying this kid, that kid, or hey, when you win. You get all your guys to be all league or all county, or you get your all state guy. It's it's that simple because you can't say, hey, you know these guys are all that good, and to walk into with a three and six football team. But if you got an undefeated team, you get your guys. So same thing with college. You get you we get we win. We'll have a bunch of Big Ten guys and a bunch of maybe a Heisman. You're right, Scar. You know, if they go through to the end and they win the national championship, the the Davey O'Briens, the Heismans, when they have those award shows, coach of the years, play of the years, I mean, they'll all be coming around uh, for Michigan if they take care of that business on the field. What are we going to take care of today? Uh, you know, I, I heard Scar, Scar refer to the trophy as uh, Paul. I saw some people today calling it Paulie B., uh, Michigan was able to get that trophy and and bring her on home, bring him on back home to uh, Ann Arbor. Big Ten East had a big showdown between Penn State and Ohio State. Let's see what Scar thought of that game. Of course, we have the NCAA versus uh, Michigan. We've been talking about that since Thursday. We'll see. You know, uh, it's surprising for me. We'll get there, but I just say every day I feel like there's a little bit something else to say about it. And then the the award winning entertaining and educational film analysis from star comes your way, which is uh, my favorite part of Mondays, but we'll go back. Even though we did a post game on Monday, just like uh, with anything, you know, you, you sleep on it, you get some, uh, some time between the end of the game and you know, you, you reflect scar 49, nothing. Uh, what are you reflecting about with, uh, with Michigan beating Michigan state by such a large, a margin by such a large margin. Denny, it's it's one of our goals. It's a rival game. The game has huge implications all the time. It's a big game for recruiting, especially in the Midwest, especially in the state of Michigan. Uh, so this game really, really matters. Um, we got it, and we and we got it done. And to beat them like we did, a lot of recruits there. So that's a huge thing. And, uh, and the momentum is good. We we come out of there healthy. Uh, again, we just you know, you know, you know I, I keep sounding like a broken record. I said it the other night that it's the same thing. You know, we we hammer people. We clear the bench. We we we, we play the whole uh, bus plane. Plane the plane. All the guys that went on the plane. Or everybody went on the bus. We play. But you know, th there might be a downside, Danny, in that we haven't been in a four quarter game. Are we going to need to do that against Penn State? Are we going to need that at Maryland? Or, you know, so there might, you know, there's an upside in that we're playing so many guys. We got a great deal of depth in all phases of the game. But that's one thing that, you know, we haven't really been in a, you know, in a, in a fourth quarter, you know, ha have to deal uh, type of football game. But Denny, we were good in all areas. They, they, they took, you know, our, our, our offensive coaches were smart. 
hey, look, we want to run it, but if you we're going to take what you give you, what you give us. You know, if you if you're going to overload the run game, then we're going to throw it. You're going to you're going you know you're going to try to go back and forth. You know, we'll find out. We'll, we we will find the weakness of what you're doing, and we're not going to force it. We're not stubborn, and we have the ability to do it all offensively. And and mentor once again was brilliant, adjusted, and. Um, you know, Danny, I, I I looked at the Michigan State game closely again, and I'm like, you know, Melden, there's there's not a great deal of talent. They lost some good players. It wasn't the kind of talent that I thought I saw, uh, you know, when I looked at them earlier in the year, and maybe it's just Michigan making people look bad. But, you know, there's some defensive players in there that just weren't – they weren't Michigan State caliber players. You know, I, I don't want to take something nothing away from Michigan, but – you know, there there were some guys in, in some positions in there that weren't the type of caliber I think they've had in in the past. Yeah, the way Michigan, I mean, the you 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 said it, they've been taking teams and, and, and wearing them out. And JJ only takes a couple snaps in the third quarter, and then he's got his hat on. And you know, nobody, none of the starters really are playing in the fourth quarter. So Scar after the the bye week, and then they play Purdue on November the fourth. That's gonna be a night game. Would you want to keep the starters in regardless of the score in the fourth quarter, knowing that the stretch run with Penn State in, in Maryland on the road and then Ohio State that, you know, those, you know, games could potentially, like you're saying, be four quarter games? Do you think that's something they might do? No, I, I think you have to play it the way the game plays out. You got to get, you know, it's still more important, you know, to get your reps for the young guys. I, I just know as a coach, I used to like a schedule. I, I used to love to have a schedule where we had three or four, three, three, maybe three games on there where you're going to hammer people. You're going to hang 50 on. You're going to beat them good. You're going to clear your bench. You're going to play everybody. And then you want a, you want a few games, hopefully a couple tough ones before you, you know, your big championship game, you know, your big rival game later in the year. You'd like to have a couple four quarter games prior to that one. But, uh, yeah, we just haven't had – I wouldn't ask for it. I wouldn't leave them in, you know, to hammer people more than we need to because I still think it's more important to play guys. It's just – no, I, you have a good question, but I would still continue to, to play the young guys in the fourth quarter for up. Yeah, they really – even if you look at uh, the halftime, obviously the game was over against Michigan State, but they were up 21-7 to on uh, Indiana, 24-10 on Minnesota at the half. Nebraska it was 28 28- Nothing. So that game was over. So you have to go back really to the Big Ten opener. It was uh, fourteen to seven. Of course, Rutgers got that that first score. And I guess you know I'll say it. BG. It was fourteen to six at the half. Other than that, you know, twenty one zip against UNLV. The opener was twenty three nothing. They, you know, they've been running and hiding. You know, from the majority of their opponents, and that's why a lot of people look at it and say, "Wow, you know, who knows? Michigan looks great, you know." But they've just uh, Harbaugh say Saturday night they're a a buzz saw, you know, just mumping, mowing everyone down. But we do expect in those final three games, it's going to be a little, little more of a, a fight. Yeah, you know, and defensively though, Danny, we play and rotate so many guys. I mean, I think we played like twenty-eight guys in the first quarter. I think Shiano said that against Rutgers. You know, we played. So, so if we have the same twenty-eight guys in the game when we're up thirty-five in the fourth quarter, there's really no big deal there defensively. Because you, those guys got to get reps. You got starters that, that are only going to play. You know, I don't even know how many uh, reps a guy like McGregor played or or Harrell played uh, Saturday. You know, because we just they because you're rotating, and then and then the third and fourth guys come in in the fourth quarter. So there's no problem getting those guys extra reps. What about you know? I've mentioned Penn State a couple times. The game on Saturday down in Columbus, Nittany Lions and Buckeyes. I thought. Uh, Penn State would put up more of a fight. I was thinking that they had a, uh, I don't know, a, a plus quarterback. And what I found out there is just so far, their quarterback, Drew Aller, I mean, the guy can't throw a ball over 15 yards, really. I mean, he's just a, he's a check down Charlie. And it's not very, it's not a very impressive offense. They got two really good running backs and they got good talent and the defense is good. Although the, you know, uh, chop. Robinson got hurt. We'll see what his status is, but you know, it, they Penn state was not very impressed. They'd been playing nobody and they'd just been, you know, chewing them up and spitting them out. But you know, their offense looked, I don't know, as pedestrian as, you know, 
pedestrian. Yeah, I, I, I think they're really, I think they're good, Denny, up front offensively. I think they're off as, 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 as good as they've been. They got some really good physical, tough block and tight ends. Um, you know, and Penn State did a pretty good job on defense. I thought Penn, or, uh, I mean, Ohio State did a pretty good job on the. I thought Penn State should have ran the football more. They had some good runs in there, uh, but you're seeing, Denny, you're seeing the guy at Ohio State is a pretty good defensive uh, football coach, and he's year two now, and I think that's going to be a tough team to move the ball on, man. It's, and I called it earlier in the week. I said that that Penn State Ohio State game will be a low scoring game because they're two really really good defenses. But I I, uh, I still think that's going to be a brutal game there, Denny, for us in, in Happy Valley. Uh, they're they're really good on defense, physical front front seven, and um, you know uh, Ohio State's got the big receiver was 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 key, and I think Ohio State's quarterback played pretty good, man. You know he's people don't, you know think I'm wrong saying he's he's getting better and he's getting comfortable. He you know he's doing some good he's doing some good things. Maybe he's not as good as the kid kids they've had. Uh, but um, you know, I, they're they're listen, they're 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 good football teams, but they are both beatable for Michigan. Okay, they are going to be serious challenges for uh, in all phases of our football team. But our quarterback's better than either of those clowns. You know, our offensive line is every our offensive line is better than Ohio State's, and Penn State's offensive line I think is better than Ohio State's. Our offensive line is right there with Ohio State's, and I think our defense is better than both of them slightly but anyway don't get me going too much about those guys but they're, they're going to be battles but i like our chances with our football team hey. no i hey you know what you just you, you lined it up and hit the nail right on the head right there everything that you said i i agree with and yeah you know mccord is all right you know he's got uh, fabulous wide receivers i think one of the keys and we don't know yet till the end of the game i mean they don't have uh, Travion Henderson, Williams has been banged up. I mean, that's uh, like, just think if Michigan didn't have their two top running backs, it would be a, a, a different team. And a uh, bouquet was hurt with the ankle injury. You know, I guess you assume those guys are all going to be, you know, back by the end, but it'd be a different team. You know, if you have, you start talking about taking three, four starters out and Penn state's been hit too, you know, with one of their top players and Robinson, who knows? I, they yeah. didn't look very good. I don't know if they gave a prognosis on him yet. Chop over there on the defensive side, but they're banged up. But yeah, yeah, Michigan, I think that's in addition to just, you know, taking Michigan State and just, you know, planting them in the ground like they did. You watch uh, Penn State and Ohio State, you feel like Michigan's got a good chance to win both of those games. Yeah, Ohio State's run game is average. Their run game is average. Penn State has a better run game. That We got to stop their run and pass, and Ohio State's, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not too, too big on some of their offensive linemen. I think they got some guys in there that, you know, he just wants to throw, throw, throw Ryan day. And I just think they're, they're just average on uh, that with return. They want to try to run the football. All right. Let's see if there's uh there's any questions that are coming in here. People are making a, a lot of points. Uh, Richard is saying Michigan's toughest competition is against their own teams. In practice, a lot, to be true, a, lot of, a lot of truth in that, man. You know, yeah, there's you know, our Tuesday, Wednesday practices going against our guys was tougher than most of you know the teams we played. Penn State had a couple of tough calls go against them. You know, you get a fumble recovery that was going the other way. I mean, that was tough, but yeah, their offense, I just their, their quarterback uh, didn't look very good in that game. Richard following it up saying nobody has a defense that can stop uh, JJ and. Penn State is light at defensive tackle, according to Bimba. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't actually notice that myself. And there it is. So any other any other games that that stood out to you? I wanted to ask you about uh, Caleb Williams. Like, so, you know, they lost, and so, so he hasn't had the greatest of seasons. And then, you know, J.J. is now moved in, at least as the, the, the betting odds here after week eight. As the Heisman favorite, there was Emmanuel Aucho. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with his work. He's uh, a former NFL player. Uh, I think he went to the U. Uh, but he uh, he put a tweet out with Williams that uh, he would advise him to just sit out the rest of the year 
and just go to the draft because he's not going to win the Heisman. USC is out of the national championship race. And, you know, here we are just over halfway through the season and somebody telling him to sit it out. What, what would you think about – what if he was asking you, hey, Scar, I'm, you know, it looks like I'm the presumptive number one pick. Why don't I just sit out? the rest of the year. What would you tell him? Man, that's tough. You know, get, get an insurance policy and keep playing. You know, he's got, he's going to make enough money. Uh, you know, I think he's probably making a ton of money NIL, but he need uh, that would be really tough to do, but I totally understand it, man. I totally understand it. But you know, Denny USC is the kind of team I talk about. Their offense is not knock you in the face type of offense. They, they fool you. They do a bunch of stuff. Okay, and it hurts their defense. That's why they've always had trouble against Utah. Because what does Utah do? They want to punch you right in the face. Okay, they, they it's it's not by accident. It's not quint, quint, it, it, it it's the real deal because they have trouble with the physical offenses because they don't see it from their offense. That's why I love what we do on offense. It helps our defense play and line up against anybody on our schedule. We want they want to play physical. We we. We can handle it because we see it against our offense. So I've covered that many times, but that's one of the reasons I think that they uh, they had tr- have trouble with uh, with Utah. Now Chip Kelly, he's different. He can he, his offense is a little more physical, and he and he's going to line up and defend. Uh, it's going to help his defense uh, play anybody and everybody. Yeah, I I get like what you're saying with with Caleb Williams, the you know the number one pick when you're talking about amount of uh, guaranteed money or whatever, thirty million or something, maybe more than that. Uh, if this was pre NIL and there was that kind of money on there, you know, you could almost see like, hey, uh, almost. Uh, and we have seen, we saw the one Bosa, Nick Bosa against TCU had a, uh, you know, he got banged up and, and Jackson Smith the jig, but I think both of those guys probably could have come back, but they were dealing with injuries and, you know, they just decided to, uh, you know, concentrate in the NFL. They're, you know, making millions now and it worked out for them. But now when you're the the face of the franchise and a a number one pick and you've got all your teammates or how you deal with your teammates and everything else. And you just saying, Hey, you know, guys, I'm pulling the plug on the season. Good luck to you guys. I'm out. Uh, If he isn't, you know, he's, he's getting money from already winning the Heisman, which, you know, almost makes you, uh, if he just had that for the rest of his life, you know, he'd be fine. But, you know, he's in the Wendy's commercial. He's uh, in the uh, Dr. Pepper commercial. You know, he looks like he's already making multi, you know, he's a, a multi-millionaire already. I'm like you, you know, uh, get the insurance policy against being a, the the first round pick if you get hurt. But, you know, uh, there's no positives, you know, to, to sitting out the rest of the way. If I'm a team that has a number one pick, there's already been talking of his dad. Like he wants a piece of the franchise and everything else. Concentrate on playing football, uh, play the rest of the year. And, you know, I, I, you know, now he hasn't said he's going to do that. This was just a recommendation from somebody in the media. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's just the next step. You know, a couple of years ago, I remember when all the guys, uh, when it was first, it was, uh, it was McCaffrey, right? He was the one. Yeah that said, Hey, he's skipping the bowl. And everybody's like, BS, you know, shouldn't do it. And a couple of Michigan guys did it. Nobody liked that either, but you know, now that they're getting paid, you know, and pay for their insurance policy. Well, they're not getting paid for the extra games, Danny. They're not getting paid for the bowl games. They're getting paid for outside of it. had nothing to do with the school paying them or the, the TV money paying them. So I think it, when you keep using that as an argument, they're not getting paid nothing for all these extra games. They're not getting paid anything to play in bowl games. So, you know, that's that's a whole nother deal. Yeah, well, he ain't uh, like uh, Mr. Martini says he ain't gonna play in a bowl game. You know, I I agree with that. I don't think he is gonna play in a bowl game unless that bowl game says, hey, you know, here's a, I don't know how much for one game having Caleb Williams that they would have to fork over to potentially get him to play in there. Who knows what it would be? I don't know myself. All right, let's see. We got a couple more. Uh, thoughts of people, you know, JJ wants trophies. He wants, he doesn't want trophies. He wants championships. That's what he said. And um, Vince likes the comments from McCarthy saying that's why he's the perfect QB for the team. He's all about the team. All right, Scar, before we get to. I've said it and I'll just say it one more time. Players repeat the culture and mindset that the head coach instills, and it all trickles down. So when you hear those guys saying those things, 
That's what they're hearing every day from their coach. I kind of like, you know, uh, Saturday night, you know, you were composed, calm, making your points about Michigan winning the game against Michigan State. And at the end, I said, hey, Scar, what about the NCAA? And it was like, I lit a little fuse. You know, you got a little, a little fire, you know, start yelling a little bit about uh, the NCAA uh, versus Michigan. And now here we are. It's been since Thursday. So you've had a chance to, you know, think about this even more. Where are you sitting on this Monday when people say, what's Scar think about, you know, Michigan and this, this uh, sign uh, advanced scout allegation. Kenny, I'm going to try to get it. There's a lot of a lot here. I'm, I'm going to just throw it at you. You know, World War II, Adam, uh, Alan Turing and the guys, they decoded the German enigma. We decoded it. Okay. They're, and, and, and those guys are heroes. You know, and, and um, I think some in technology is a big thing in football. It's a big thing in warfare. Technology is a big thing in business, and it's a big thing in football. It's a huge thing in football. I, I could go, go over so many different things. When I was able to get an overhead projector, when we were able to make copies, I had the copy machine able to make copies for my play. I mean, that little bit of technology to be able to make anyway. Okay, so technology matters. And, it, and, and I gave my three different, uh, three different things that could be going on. One is Jim's a crook. He sent a guy there to videotape their coaches on the sideline. That's option one. I said option two is that Jim is just smarter than the other guys, and he hired a guy to evaluate TV copies, and he did a better job of it than anybody else. Our guy is doing a better job of evaluating the, 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 the film that is available and legally available, and Jim got a better guy. And the third option is that – it's propaganda. We're number one. Greg Schiano don't like it. How do I throw some mud into their program? I talked about the art of war and chaos. I think it's a little bit of two and three that Greg Schiano can't accept the fact that he got outsmarted. Somebody decoded, and I'm not using that term, stealing. We decoded their their uh, their signals. You know, Denny, when you when you run when you Old school, we used to bring a guy. That, in some schools, do it. Iowa still does it. They bring a guy in, and and uh, in the huddle, bring the guards in and out, or the receivers, bring the play in. Okay, you know why guys don't huddle? You know what? You know why they don't huddle? Because they want to wear out and abuse your defense. They don't want you to make any substitutions. They want to run a play like like uh, uh, the guy at T Tennessee and, and Lane Kippen. They want to run a play every fifteen seconds. They want your defense running ragged. They want to get take advantage of you. They don't care about the health, safety of your defensive players, just like Nick Saban said. Remember when Nick Saban was getting on him for doing that? Okay, the other thing is they want to do is they want to get the advantage, and they don't want you to make substitutions. So on, if, they're, if they got a drive going and it's third and one, they don't want you to be able to bring in an extra D lineman. Or if it's third and eight, they don't want you to bring a, a, a corner in. So they want all the advantages. Okay, what's the downside of, of uh, no huddle? The downside is you got to communicate. Okay, you got to communicate somehow from the sideline to the, uh, you know, to the court to the, to your team. But bottom line is there's a there's a downside to it. And when you're when you coach and play football, anybody that's coached and play, you you are looking at everything. You're feeling you're hearing snap count. You're getting a feel for snap count. You're looking at everything. I talked about splits. And, and 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 I remember a game, Danny. I, I this team was really a, a good football team, and and I'm like, how the hell are we going to stop this team? I, I Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm looking at film. I can't figure out nothing. They're just good. And then finally, I I found one the offense one offensive tackle. The kid was 100 percent in his stance. I could read runner pass. This one kid, mm. and that changed everything. And, and we ended up winning the game. And that kid, he actually got hurt in the game early. And I never ever, and he went down. I never ever in my life won an opponent who, who got hurt to get back up than that kid. Because we could read his, but we, we, you know, you looked at the film and you look at these things. I got outsmarted many times as a coach from other teams. 
that had that did a better job of scheming and, and scouting and and they fooled me okay and, and it happens and I and uh, I think that's what I think Greg Schiano's feelings are hurt a little bit and um he can't accept it and he's like you know let's just throw some mud out there they could they can't be that smart but you know I know I'm going I got one more thing though Danny because I'm going kind of long but you know Bo Schembechler was a visionary he was one of the first guys to hire a strength coach. He was one of the first guys to hire a recruiting coordinator. Bo Schembechler hired Greg Harden, the guy that Tom Brady and all these guys talk about. Bo brought him in, you know, to work with guys, to talk to kids that, that needed a counseling type of a guy. You know, maybe the role that, that Jim Harbaugh saw, there he is right there. I, I've known Greg for a long time. Um, maybe the role that Jim had in, 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 because he's a visionary said, you know what, I'm going to bring in a guy that's going to analyze TV copies and we're going to be ahead of the enemy decoding sideline signals. Maybe we did a better job during the game. Maybe it was okay. The game, and, and that happens. The game starts and now you got to, and you're figuring things out. You know, you, you, you're allowed to then. What, what are the signals? I can look at the guy in the game. You know what I mean? I'm, obviously, I, I, I probably can't tape him, but I'm looking at things and I'm feeling things and I'm adjusting to things and I'm hearing the cadence and I'm seeing what they're doing. And smart coaches see those things more so than dumb guys. So I threw a lot out there. I think it's between two and three. Somebody got uh, – if, if we weren't ranked number one, I don't think uh, Shiano would have been – and I think it's Shiano. That's, that's just my take. But I threw a lot at you. Shrano went on record saying that that what he was saying at halftime didn't have to do with uh, signal stealing. It had to do with some of the ref calls. But, you know, you can believe it. That doesn't mean that he's, you know, is uh, completely out of it. However, you know, uh, the most people saying it's Ryan Day. You know, on, on, on Thursday, my thought was when I saw the rule that you can't send somebody on the, uh, the staff in person. And I said, well, you know, if Michigan sent somebody on their staff, then, you know, you should be able to determine that pretty easy and, you know, figure out kind of black and white. And, you know, a lot of people pointed out like, hey, this guy was on the sideline the whole time, can't be in two places at once and whatever else. But uh, it, it appears that the NCAA can extend like the advanced scout. I put it in air quotes like it doesn't matter if it was actually somebody on staff. It was if it was anybody that was there filming this and then bringing back that particular data and then Michigan putting it in their computers and using it, you know, that could be the, the crux of their case. I don't know what kind of cause probable cause they had, but they did walk to the football office, the NCAA and ask for the computers of Connor stallions. And they were able to get those computers, but the, the part like it appears, I was talking with somebody today that he was telling me, that he knew that there was something afoot like this for over a week. And so if this guy knew, I'm thinking that Michigan knew. So if the NCAA walks in and gets these computers and they were not uh, looked over, if Michigan didn't have some kind of code red, you know, to be able to get, you know, and hand over this hardware, uh, you know, I believe that they did. And so you have to see, like, I, I believe that, you know, like, I don't know where the, the proof is going to come from getting the computers and being able to look on there. And if you saw footage that wasn't from TV copies, that was from the stands, I think you could easily put two and two together there and say, look, they have got this footage from the stands from someone. This is a violation of the rule, but I don't think Michigan is going to get caught that way. So then I'm wondering what could they, what could they say? After that, to prove that Michigan was guilty, you know, that, hey, we saw some money in the stands making some notations. We actually saw somebody in the stands with a cell phone. Everybody, I, I don't know how they're going to be able to, I, I don't know how they're going to um, get Michigan. To, um, I don't yeah, know. They gotta have, you know, hope they hope they got to have some proof and we'll, we'll, we'll have see how have it plays out. I yeah, don't feel have, like I, I felt like there could have been some proof, like if they just, walked in and, and seized the computers, but it, it, it felt, well, it felt like to me talking with that. There was the, this was not a complete surprise that the NCAA sprung this on Michigan. So, you know, I don't think that they're going to have any evidence 
on the on the Wolverines. Now, the damage that's done, and you know, like from the rivals and everybody saying Michigan's a cheater, you know, that's one thing. I, I think that actually in the in the rest of the season, I think it actually works in Michigan's favor. It certainly worked in Saturday night. You know, Michigan State was afraid to flash any signals. They're actually going over there in person. Now, whether that prohibit, you know, I don't know how they would have lost, but it didn't do anything. But they they were spooked. And so the other teams, you know, now they're going to be doing everything, thinking that Michigan, you know, is sitting on them anything else. But um, and I think in the short return, short run this year, uh, it will help. And then I don't think that the NCAA is going to have evidence on those computers. So I wonder, you know, whatever, if they did it or not, I don't know where the proof, the evidence is going to come from. Danny, this is not new. I remember my brother uh, and I both played this one team, and uh, he 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 knew he pretty. My brother said, "Listen, they film you on the sideline because we were both defensive coaches." He said, "They are gonna they are gonna film you," and uh, you know we were pretty sure they did. They used to have the the chain gang used to go meet with the head with the coaches at halftime. You know, the chain gangs on the visiting side. But I hope you know. I think yeah. I hope hopefully they find nothing. But this is just like negative recruiting, Danny. This is just like, you know, coaches will do anything to, to try to uh, bring somebody down. It's it's another form of negative recruiting. You know, let's try to bring Michigan down a notch. and uh, But hopefully there's nothing there. And, uh, you know, just it's disappointing that this this kid's picture's in the paper. You know, he's a, just put Harbaugh's picture in the paper. Why you got to put this kid's picture in the paper? You, you mean know? Stallions? Yeah, just put the – why not put the uh, – just put the head coach in there. Well, the, he's the uh, the the center of the investigation. I, you know, and he is on the staff. Accused. And they, and Accused. They, well, that's it. They seized his computer. I mean, like, so, all right, don't put all his right. name up there. Why did Michigan suspend him with pay then? Okay. Well, I, anyway, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm, I'm just asking questions, Scar. I'm not trying. You can have well, I get it. I just sometimes it's interesting how some people are accused and you don't see their picture in paper. And, well, and, I mean, usually okay. when it's that case, it's somebody like a victim of uh, assault, or, you know, and you don't want to put, you know, that person in the uh, in the in the media that way. I think that's understandable. Yeah. I mean, like the one part, you know, it's no fun when you're on the side and you're being accused of something and, you, you know, you, you're you've got to go through a process and everybody automatically says you're guilty. Like I was saying, like, you know, if this is true, I was making a, a point like, uh, you know, on Thursday, I said, yeah, you know, if this is true, you know, I was kind of wondering what would happen, what the penalty would be. People were all jumping on me like, what do you know? You don't know anything. You know, where's the proof? And I was just like, look, people do like you, you, you do make assumptions that you feel like like you feel like the NCAA must have something on Michigan to do this. But if they can't prove it then where's it going to go? I mean, that's where we're at right now. And I, you know, me talking with someone today, I, you know, I feel like I don't know where they're going to get their evidence from uh, with, with Michigan in this. It felt like it was going to be on that computer and that, but it felt like they had a heads up on that computer. So I don't think they're going to find anything on that computer. So now I'm wondering where they're going to get their information from. That's all. That's where okay. I'm at. Well, we'll see what all happens. Right. We will, uh, we will see. You are right, Scar. We'll see how that ends up playing out. Uh, all right, let's. We'll see. Did we got two or three questions on that? Go ahead, type your question up. If you had a point or a question, I'm not going to say anything. We'll let Scar handle it when it comes down to the NCAA, and you know, innocent until proven guilty is a thing of the past. I mean, this is. I know, like criminal courts. The NCAA scar, like, you know, it's, they're different. Uh, I do think, like, all of us, like, we're talking about Michigan. We're saying, oh, you know, Michigan, if the shoe was on the other foot, it was another team, everybody would be just lobbing and acting like everybody else was guilty. So there is a little bit of that going on because it's it's Michigan. That doesn't make it right. And that's my point. Here are the questions, Scar. They're coming in for you. GC says Penn State's defense isn't fundamentally sound. They leave holes. We will get them. I mean, where do the Buckeyes get? 20 points? They, they got to be pretty decent, and they haven't given up many points to anybody else all year. So, you know, I, I hope you're right. I, I, I That's one of the areas I think I still am not a big believer in Manny Diaz. I think we're going to – I think he makes mistakes. I think he can be fooled. I think we can formation them and do some things to get them out. But I think they have some good players. And, um, 
you know, Sharon Moore and the collaboration has got to be good that day. But, um, you know, whatever they did, the gentle comedian that you saw, hopefully uh, it'll continue. But only giving 20 to the Buckeyes isn't terrible. You know. So, yeah, we got to out coach them. We got to find those things you're, you saw. We got to put them in bad uh, alignments, bad adjustments. We got to, you know, do things to give our players an advantage. All right, there we go. All right, so now we are ready for some film. And the film, we wanted to tell everyone and thank uh, Quick Cut Video and Analytics for the scar of the Telestrator and what's going to happen here as we we take another visit up to East Lansing. Looks like they're getting ready to kick the ball off, and Scar's already got a question mark up on the screen. Well, I didn't like the way we start this football game. You oh. know, where you know the guy's three, four yards deep. I don't know that we want to. You know, why are we trying to return that? I, I think he probably was told. You know, I don't want to start at the. I think we start at the eighteen yard line here. Uh, you know, or the, the sixteen yard line. I, I just don't like doing that to start the game. He's a young kid. He hasn't returned enough. I like this stuff here, Denny. We, we, you know, we're doing different things. You know, we come out with one back, but I noticed they move, you know, our two tight ends. They'll put them in different positions. Sometimes they're wide. Sometimes now they're both uh, wide here. And, it, 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 you know, they have reasons for that. Do they want to bring these bigger bodies away from the box? And we end up throwing, here's, uh, here's second and three. You know, we just do a little dink pass to Corum here. You know, we got the field spread out. And this kind of stuff, as a defensive football player, it's so discouraging. And it's because it's so easy for them, you know, to convert a first down here. And it's it's just boom, you throw a little dink. <laughs> anyway, they're they're dropping out in the zone. And you know, I gotta believe that getting those big guys out of the box with uh, you know, we did a lot of moving of our tight ends for this game. Last year, you got to remember, last year we really abused them with our uh, – we had mismatches at the tight end position. And anyway, we did a lot of moving with the tight end. And you got to watch this defensive end here, the way he's rushing the quarterback. And I think a lot of the stuff they had have got – see, he looks like he's trying to mirror, where he's not trying to, you know, get up field and get a pass rush on J.J. Like they, they had, had guys designed – and I've done this as a coach. When you got fast guys, you got to deal with. You, you're going to have people mirroring, but mirroring hurts your pass rush because you're just not rushing the quarterback, and, um, and you end up giving a guy a lot of time. And, and th that kind of what happened to the Lions yesterday, and it it happened here. Uh, it happens with JJ. I'm glad you put that play in, Scar. That third and fourteen to me was the biggest play of the game. Like you know, Michigan won that yeah. game, 39 nothing. But that was the first series, the 12 play, 84 yard. That. The key, why that was the key of the game, it was third and 14. Michigan picked up a lot of third and longs this game. That was the first one hitting A.J. Barner like that, everything that went into that throw. But then, you know, they went down and they end up scoring there. There's another yeah. third down they're making a play. Well, that was a huge, huge play. And uh, it, it's, but it's, again, it's, it, it all gets back to the threat of the quarterback's ability to run while you have the timid pass rush. Anyway, I thought this was just, you know, this is so easy, man. This is easy stuff, third and four. And they're really, they didn't want to play much. They played a lot of zone underneath. We got Roman Wilson figuring out what they're in. And, and the linebacker kind of gets out of position here. And we just throw a little, another little dink. This stuff is easy, man. And you're not getting a pass rush. We're just, we're just stuffing that, that little, whatever kind of stunts they're trying to run. Smart, tough, offensive line, well coached. You know, Denny, I, I talked to Roman Wilson at practice. I I I, I, I know I have a we I uh, a friend of mine is a friend of his dad's, and I'd never met him before. But he was sitting there, and and uh, there was a little break in the action. And he is a put together kid, man. You know, he doesn't look like that kid is a you know he looked like a darn little linebacker. He's 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 a, a solid kid, nice kid. Anyway. Uh, I just thought I'd throw that out because I was able to. No, able to I, I like hearing about that. You know, there was someone, I, I forget who was making the comparison last week or the week before uh, of Roman Wilson to Amonra St. Brown. And, you know, Amonra St. Brown is uh, is put together as well. So that comparison. And then 
had somebody tell me the same thing about Samaj Morgan. You know, hey, he's the monitor of St. Brown. Hey, if you're, you know, kind of a uh, around six feet and under wide receiver and you're you're tough and you look pretty good, you get a comparison to one of the best in the game right now, and that's a, a monitor of St. Brown. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, I saw Roman when he was a freshman and, you know, it's just, it happens with everybody, you know, you, but he, he has really, really gotten thick and he's a stout kid. I can see where they lead him through, you know, to block some of those linebackers and safeties. Anyway, we're getting great push here. Second and goal. You, you look at the, you know, I'm really, really starting to like Loveland and uh, getting him blocking like, like Barner and, and look at him just caving this, caving this in, man. You know, we don't score a touchdown, but it's just, Moving guys, man. We get in there the next play. I'm gonna leave some of this stuff for Coach Diorio for Friday. Oh, hey, thanks, Scar. Oh, anyway, thanks. this is uh, you know, people want to yell at a defensive player, and this is really tough. You know, it, one of the toughest things to do in football, Danny, is tackle in the open field. And yeah. this Carter kid ain't no joke. And Michael Barrett's a good tackler, but this is a big play, third and ten, their first drive. You know, and he, he we missed the tackle there. But, uh, you know, and, and, and that's one of the things that we ask of our linebackers that's tough sometimes is, you know, in zone coverage, you got help. There's no help there. I was a little uh, – I was questioning this, uh, how, how much of a cushion. This is number two, the All-American. You know, it's third and 15, and I, I just was questioning this big cushion here, Danny. You know, we let him uh, – you know, he's got uh, – he probably has a deep third or he's got something where he has deep responsibility, but I thought this was a pretty big cushion here. I mean, now we get him uh, – We just don't want to get beat deep or give up a – I understand, but now we get him uh, – you know, now they're fourth and two. I mean, I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. I, you obviously, don't, you don't want to get – Fourth and two, you want him in fourth and six. So I guess yeah, I'd, rather, I'd rather think that we could get this thing and, and, and break up where they're throwing it. You know, we're tackling him right there, maybe at, you know, fourth and four. Instead yeah. of now fourth and two, I mean, obviously it turns out good because we get them stopped here, and this is a great play. You're going to see uh, we're in There's our base in a game. Key number two, right here, fourth and two. This is their second drive. Yeah, this is huge, huge. I I, uh, I wasn't sure if he was going to go for it. You know, I thought he should have punted it. I guess in, in retrospect, but we're in our base. You know, we got the three defensive linemen in the game, and uh, you got to look closely up here at uh, Harrell. He's the guy that makes the play. And, you know, and this is one of the things we're doing. We're putting in our base package, we put McGregor in here as a defensive tackle. So you got three edge players in the game, Harrell, McGregor, and I can, uh, can't see who that is out here, but Harrell makes this play here. Let's watch him, Denny. Okay, watch him right there. All right. Watch how he takes this tackle and stuffs and punches them. He's punching the tackle. He's playing and he's 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 flattening it out. He's there's no movement and now he's able to make a play. So that you know they're trying to get movement there. We just showed our offensive line getting movement. There ain't no movement here. Punching and we there's a I mean obviously there's a couple dudes in there that are helping out, but I think Harold was the key guy that really was the key guy to getting that play stopped. That's a huge play, man. You're going to give the ball. You're down 7 nothing. Now you're going to give it to him at the 50. You could have punted it, try to stick him deep. Um, you know, a couple – something a little blo different blocking scheme there, pulling the guard there. But nice throw, tight window. Great throw. And um, – you like you like burner from the beginning, man. Oh He's man, nice you know, I like it now, Danny. I've always liked him as a blocker, but right. I like it that we you you know we've got you we, and here this is more more deception. This is stuff we put in for these guys. Remember I showed you last week, Corum. Remember I showed you last week. Like right now, what, what, what Michigan does often is they'll bring this guy in motion and they'll set him up here. Okay, they'll bring him in motion, set him up here, or maybe they'll set him up here. Okay, so Donovan Edwards is kind of going in motion. He's looked like he might throttle down and go, come into the backfield and set up. Last week, we did it with Corm and we ran jet sweep. Okay, which was new, something we hadn't run. This week, I'm going to run it through. They do this similar kind of thing, only now instead of – now we throw a bubble to him. So those are the things that I like, Denny. That's called deception. 
because the defense is, you know, Donovan is sitting here. He's pump faking like he's going to maybe line up in the backfield. You know, you got to take it from the beginning. Like he might line up in the back. No, he's not lining up in the backfield. Now this puts stress on the defense and it's a little bit of an acting, acting move there, but that's what, that's what football is. It's, it's about deception. And it, and it's, it, it is what it is, man. Deception in all ways. All right, here we go. 14, nothing. Uh, we're getting pass rush here and we're getting a good play by our corner down here. Third and 10. This is uh, I think this is uh, this is uh, Wallace. Wallace in there getting a lot of clock. Gets a good break on the football, but we're getting good pressure at the top from Stewart. This kid is everything we thought he would be. He's right there putting pressure. The quarterback's got to be feeling that. But we're getting a good break. He's feeling the route now. See, this is not quite man or zone. He's got – this is where he's feeling. I think he's jamming. And the way they coach this, I think he's jamming and feeling. He's jamming here, but he's feeling what this what the other receiver's doing, coming toward him. That he's – you know, he's, he can come off on that thing. So – not quite sure if it if he had the flat or if he's reading that 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 that, uh, that combo coverage that uh, we've talked about, but whatever it is, he read it well. And and this is number nine in his feet. Don't recruit quarterbacks that can't run, please. And here's this big receiver here. And 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 we we're we're running some stuff here, Danny, that I think puts their linebacker in conflict. Okay, we got what is the formation here? We got one back, but we're doing some things, and they're in a zone coverage. And this kid ends up biting. He ends up biting on the crosser, and this tight end and it ends up finding a little sweet spot here. If this if this linebacker doesn't bite, you know, we they probably could have broke on this on him maybe for a shorter game, but he bites, and we end up throwing. We find that uh, JJ finds the seam, and uh, you know that's. That's a mistake by Michigan State as well as it is as a is a smart play by Michigan. Our our quarter, our quarterback and our and our tight end found the seam there. Uh, here's 18 blocking. We're getting good movement here, and this is uh, second and five. And this was hammering people, getting movement, and Corum finds a way. This is what I I talked about this as a as a if I'm playing defense for Michigan, I love Corum because I am. I get another drink of water, man. I I got it. He just converted a first down, man. One more series. Love it. He's the he's the convert. He's the first down converter. Okay, this is six five versus five ten, and I think we we found number twelve. I talked about that. I looked at even a more film. We really, I think our coaches were looking at number twelve. Okay, is twelve. Covering 89, or is he covering 18? And he went back and forth. And I think our coaches were looking at him, but th there's a there's a there's a big, you know, even even he, in that kind of situation. Well, that was 15 there, but there's there's a guy's uh might be covered, Denny, but he's really not covered. You know what I mean? When you got a big height, height discrepancy. But anyway, you you'll see in other in some of these other big plays, 12 was covering the tight end that was. Often the uh, the receiver. Here's Sanistro coming off the edge. Now last week we I kind of got on him. Or no, he's not. This is a different play. This is the nice play he makes. He doesn't he doesn't interfere with the guy, and he sees his hands go up. You know, Denny he's he's looking. He sees the hands go up. When the hands go up, his hands go. Well, he actually just hit him with his head there. But that's how they coach that. When his hand goes up, your hand goes up. But it's good coverage. Sanistro had a good game. Yeah, he did. Did some good things. He's a great. He's a. Uh, I was gonna say great. He's just, he's very good. Maybe he is great. He's great. Played great in that game. Okay, now I I don't know if this is predetermined or not. Okay, number nine. This is third and one. It is is I when I looked at this, is it predetermined? And and I think one of the reasons I might want to call it predetermined. You remember when we had that turnover last year against these guys, Denny, or two years ago? JJ and Corum on the mesh point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Because I think, you know, when you're reading that, there's a possibility for a turnover. That could be one reason they might like.
to just say the hell with it, JJ. We're going to pull this thing out, and you're going to, and, and we think they're going to be in this kind of a defense, and we think there'll be some green out here. That's I don't know for sure, but when I watch JJ's uh, tempo here, he looks he looks like his feet are a little a little a little quicker to get out of that thing, and uh, and, and you know normally he he rides that mesh a little longer. You follow me? Yeah, and I think I, I don't I don't know for sure. I'm just I'm just guessing, but it looks like the run is there. And if you look at how they're lined up, that's why I got that circle there. Let me get this. Let me get back to it. I thought there was a nice little seam in here. I mean, look at look at this right here. Look at this hole here, and that's where we you know Corum would have got the football. So it almost looked like we probably should have gave the football here. But I'm also wondering if they are predetermining it. I don't know. Because they defend this play. Yeah, so that they, play. And, uh, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, Danny. What were your thoughts? Uh, that play and in, in McCarthy missing, I think, Tyler Morris, who was pretty wide open after the DB fell down. I don't know if they made any other plays that you would even say, you know, that, that bad, just like uh, plays that were there. Yeah. Just a, well, they defended it. They defended the play. They had a lot of defense on JJ on the keep, and the, the give was probably there. And I'm I'm just wondering if, you know, is it predetermined? Anyway, this is a stunt. It's third and seven. Okay, we're bringing here. We're dropping two guys that are at the line of scrimmage. This is conflict. We're bringing a, a safety here off the edge, and we got the young freshman. And the we, we're giving problems to the protection. This is Minter giving creating problems. Who's rushing? Who's dropping? And, and, and Mason Grand end, ends up coming coming free because all this stuff puts conflict on the deep on the uh, the protection get off the field great job players great job coaches all right coaches uh now here we go Denny it's what's the down and distance here third and inches. Now I had Roman Wilson circled. Okay, you, you, you remember a couple of weeks back I got frustrated when we when we motion in our receivers, and we had them lined up like over here, and, and these teams were coming off, beating us inside. You remember that? I do. Okay. Well, look, look where Roman lines up, and and and, and I, I bet you I, it it may or may not be coincidence. I just talked about how thick and strong this kid looks. I wonder if they want to bring Roman in because I think that was Tyler Morris that one time, right? They got beat inside. Roman's a bigger kid, a thicker kid, but his alignment is tighter to the tackle. So anyway, I point this out because we convert here, but he's sealing, he's sealing real nice in here. You follow me? And when we get, he's really not at the point of attack, but I think we've made a little adjustment there because we're getting great movement here. Nugent and, 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 uh, I thought Zinter had a hell of a game. He did a great job. Both of our guards were good. So, great job. All right, let's get on to the next play. Two deep coverage. I think our coaches, our players knew it. Our coach knew it. Our tight end knows it. He's reading coverage. And Danny, the the. I ran this. I coached it. I coached against the weakness of the two deep coverage. The Tampa two is it always, you always got to have a fast linebacker to try to run with this, but it's tough. Is it down the middle is the weakness of the two deep coverage. Okay. You run your tight end down the middle or a back, whoever you want to try to exploit the middle of the field. And that's exactly what we do here with, uh, with Loveland. JJ finds it. The linebacker can't run with them. The safety's not going to get there in time. You see that, Danny? The, the safety's up on the hash mark up there. He's dropping into the hash. He's dropping here. The other safety's going to be over in here. And then you're going to try to ask this linebacker. You know, you it's tough. Now he has to turn and try to run with them. And he throws a nice ball and he puts it right where it's supposed to be. But that's that's the weakness of the 2D defense. Our coaches found it. Our players executed it. Our quarterback put it right in the right spot. Now, we got on Sanistro last week for losing uh, contain on, on this blitz. I could see that he's throttling down a little more here, coming under control. You, you notice the difference, Danny? Remember the kid last week cut on inside of him from Indiana? Yeah. 
but I mean, it's a pass here, but I just see that. I think he's, uh, you know, he's coming under a little more control. This is just a weakness to this. We've got a lot. We put our linebacker in a tough predicament here because now he has to cover this back coming out and that's tough, but he makes the play. And, you know, sometimes when, when a team, when you have a bad defense and you only give them six yards, that's a great job. You know, that's a good thing. We do a great job executing this stunt here. This is one of the things I talk about with our linebackers, how we ask them to do so many things. And he, this thing is timed up perfectly. It's executed perfectly. Barrett just want to rub. You just want to rub that shoulder, that inside shoulder, that tackle. Okay, this is a stunt that uh, – and the way you want to run this thing, Danny, let's get take it back. But we execute it. All right, so – you want your edge guy to kind of – you want to kind of have a step up field to get this tackle. You don't want to come too fast. Stewart can't come too fast inside. He's got to step up field and get this tackle to flatten out a little bit, even hinge out if you can. Okay, you don't – he doesn't want to go too fast. And Barrett is coming right on the inside of this thing. He's going to try to work the inside of this tackle so Stewart can come free, and that's exactly what happens. He gets that tackle flattening out. Barrett just bumps his shoulder just enough, and they don't communicate it good enough, and Stewart comes underneath and makes the tackle. Great job. Find your teammate and celebrate. But my question is, how about, how about some love for 23, you know, Denny? <laughs> well, he gets it from Scar the next day. Well... <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Nice little dink pass underneath. Okay. Second and 10. I just really think this kid is a tough kid. And he's, he's, uh, he's, he's this big six, six kid. I, I saw him at practice. He's a tall 250 pound kid. I would go into the alley with this kid. I mean, I think I, I could say that about a, a lot of these Michigan football players, but he just seemed like a rugged, tough kid that really takes pride in blocking, you know, getting this first down. Great pickup. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what we're thinking here. You know, you're, you're, you're not at the line of scrimmage. Donovan just get set. I don't care if he's back over here. It doesn't matter. Get set. That's a seven point penalty. You know, you, you okay. Now Jim makes a good point. You know, Jim makes a good point. Is he moving backwards? Okay. And it doesn't matter. He doesn't have to be set if he's moving backwards. It's, it's the, uh, it's the, the, at the end, he kind of moves forward again, you know, and I think that's what, and it's, it's it really is a questionable call. And Jim's talking about, it. he's like, Hey, this guy's moving back. You're allowed to move back. You know, he, he makes a good point and it, it, it really is a questionable call, but um, moving along, you know, Denny, this is three, three, five. And I, I wouldn't doubt if we put some of this in after the TCU game. Maybe we, we put some of this stuff in to help our offense because we're going to see it. But here we got Mason Graham lined up as an edge player. This is the first time I've seen that. We've got Harrell lined up in here. But this is really a 3-3-5 look. You know, it's very, very similar to that. So, and we're doing some uh, some different things from it. You know, they complete a pass. I just want to point out that it's in our package and, and are we doing it to help our offense? So they get familiar with getting a good look at the 335. Good play. Or no, this is not a good play here. See, we're, we're slanting. you got to be coordinated. Defense has to be coordinated, Denny. If, if we're slanting right, everybody has to slant right. If we're slanting left, everybody has to slant left. So we're bringing him off the edge. So that means he's going to be in here. That means he's got to be in here. He's going to be out here, and he's going to be out here. And if you watch this, this guy, because Jenkins is out here. He's in his gap. This guy doesn't get to his gap out here, and that's where they hit us. He's got to be inside of that thing. It's not a coordinated defense. So that's a big 99 there because we got – we got two guys in this get the same game. He doesn't either. He doesn't get the signal. He doesn't get. That's why communication is so important in defense. 
Okay, he's either not getting the communication because he's he he need, he's a, he's a better athlete, and I've seen him do it before where he beats this guy, but he doesn't do it here. So either he didn't, he, he must not have got the communication. Communication is so crucial when you're trying to adjust and you're trying to stunt on the fly. I don't see. Here's another example. We're not we're screwed up. We got two guys going into the same gap. Okay, two guys going into the same gap, and Junior say, makes a hell of a play. See how there's two guys running into each other there on a stunt? Yeah. I was just pointing out earlier how Barrett and Stewart really executed that stunt real nice. This is an example of how not to do it. You know, that's that's not any good. And, look, you know, this is a hell of a play. He doesn't make this play, man. There's a lot of grass out there. And you got to be a good tackler in space. Good job by Junior having a good year yeah he's having a great year I, and i've said it i think one of the biggest reasons is he's not playing as much football he gets off the field let's see what happens here oh the interception yeah he drops on i'm not sure what he's seeing what he's feeling and how this coverage is where he felt he could come off that thing is he just feeling the Maybe he sit. Maybe he is a flat player. He probably is a flat player, and it, he, he disguises it pretty well. And that quarterback doesn't think he's going to come off of that thing. So maybe he was a flat player, or maybe he's reading the release of the number two receiver, and he's able to come off and play the zone. I'm not really sure, but uh, it's a great job. And and I'm trying, Danny. Is this all Paul Bunyan? Is that why these guys are doing this stuff? Yes. Okay, I I kind of figured that. Okay. DPJ is the first one I remember doing that up up in East Lansing just a couple of years ago. Okay, this tells you where, who we're playing here. You got to know you're, you're playing the Spartans. This is the kind of stuff they do. Just want to point that out. Don't they'll, they'll talk and they'll do that kind of stuff. McGregor today said he just thought somebody fell on him. He didn't know it was a <laughs> We get good contain here. Here's a short yardage play, third and one. And um, sometimes, you know, making the play isn't necessarily making the tackle. But, you know, it's third and one, and we've got a lot of defense in here. And their coaches felt, let's run that ball out here. And you get a good job by uh, Page here, even though he doesn't make the tackle. Him and him and uh, Harold, they don't make the tackle, but they're he's inside out. He's outside in. And Hausman ends up making the tackle. So their, their bodies are in the right position. So both all three of them guys are good. And Harrell, good. Keep the ball inside the defense. You know, because, you know, Danny, sometimes it's so frustrating. You know, I see guys, I watched the Lions do the same thing yesterday. It's like, if okay, if I'm Harrell, okay, Harrell ain't stopping a running play in here. He's not. So just take do do your responsibility, man. You know, play the perimeter. Good job. Good stop. Team defense. Ernest Hausman making that stop. Yeah. Okay, here's them punting. We have we're getting, I'm gonna knock on wood, Denny. We're catching punts. We're catching, we're rotating guys, and they're all catching punts. So that's a good thing. Now here we are. We, we didn't run. You know, I don't got a whole lot of running plays in here, but we block it. Uh, we're, we're pulling the backside uh, tackle here in the, in the backside tight end, and we, we get him in man coverage so the receiver knows that we get two for one here. There's a penalty somewhere in there, but we get a late hit here. I couldn't find the damn penalty. But we execute it. We get a good block. At the, our, our, our down blockers are doing good. And, um, you know, good job reading, reading what the defense was doing. And then they get the late hit stupid stuff. And that's the kind of stuff you got to really talk to your team about is when you get up on these guys, you know, they're playing for nothing. They're ready for basketball season. We're playing for championships here. Here's a Michigan state defense. You know, I wonder what the heck are you doing, man? We score a touchdown here, throw it to the backside tight end. But, I mean, what is this? There's nobody here, man. Mm. You know, it's an easy block for um, uh, for uh, Bredesen. 
So, you know, you got to be a coordinator. You got to always have somebody contain. JJ rolls out, throws an easy pass. You got a, a dragging tight end, and uh, coach is fired up. What's the score? 42 goose. So 40, 42 nothing. And we they still got nothing. We're stuffing the inside run. We've got a linebacker coming up, stuffing an offensive lineman. Look at me. Look at he takes that big guard on, comes off, make a play. What linebacker is that, Denny? Looks like Barrett. I mean. Or Hood. Let's see. This guy right here, Denny. Oh, that guy. I was looking at the inside guy. Yeah, that's nice punch. That might have, I don't know if that was uh, junior, but anyway, I like the punch. Nothing. There's no movement. They had zero movement on our front the whole game. Zero. Good to see Tunnel getting reps, played a lot of football. Okay. This kid is what I call an imposter. This is why it's easy to defend when you when you got tight ends that can't block. Danny, this kid, all we kept hearing about is this big car kid, right? Number six? Yeah. But guess what? They don't run the football to him at all. He can't. He can't block anybody. So he caught a ball here. I just want to point it out why it's so much easier to create your defensive scheme and what you do when all, when all a guy does is uh, run around and catch passes. You know, that's why Loveland is really becoming an all-around tight end, and it really gives the defense problems. And this is the freshman quarterback finally really doing some things that, you know, he looked like a freshman. So our, our plan was good. Stop the run. Make this freshman beat you. Yeah, and here's – uh, here, we got total in the game, and we got um, 82 is Morgan, right? Yes. And, you know, showing the uh, nice pass by Tuttle. This kid is not the biggest kid, uh, but he's a quick, elusive guy. It's 5'10". He's going to get thicker. He'll be like Roman. We get a couple years of a uh, big bend. I just like the effort here by, you know, the whole defense. But I like McGregor's effort coming all the way from the backside, you know, and then running this thing down. This is what you get when you're not, you know, when you rotate guys, you can get. And then we do that. You just got to be – I mean, he's not really hitting the kid. He's like he tripped, like he's trying to – whatever, man. Got to be smarter. Can't do it. Freshman. I don't know. See, here's another uncoordinated defense, Denny. We're not sound. You know, you, you these young guys are getting reps, and this is so important that, you know, you these guys are getting reps, and they've got – to show the coaches they know what the heck they're doing. And, and see, this, they're, they're, I guarantee you we don't have a defense like this that has – okay, I, 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 you know, again, it's this probably the same guy. Let me go slow. If he's coming, that means they're coming this way. Okay? And what do you got? You got this guy going, and then you end up with two guys in the same gap. See how you got two guys in the same gap? Yeah. And you got one guy here, and you got nothing there. That's this guy here is uh, who is that? Who is this guy right here? This right here. Is that ninety nine? Could be. Anyway, it's a mental mistake, and okay, it's against these guys. We're up forty two, but that that's going to limit your reps, and that's going to all this stuff matters. And you know, I didn't know Danny they were red shirting this kid. Apparently, Jim made a statement, so I was glad to see him in the game. And uh, he's in the game. He got got a lot of reps. And uh, 13 is doing a lot of things. Got, get, got getting a lot of clock for a young guy. He's making some good, Yeah, yeah he, he's made some good plays, good tackling in space. So the future looks good. I agree. He makes in the mop up time. He's the one that stood out more than anyone. Yeah, here we're overloading this side. Okay, we got again, Danny. These guys are the third and fourth string guys. Okay. And the coaches, they want to see, you know, they want to see how smart you are. I'm not calling a vanilla defense. If I'm if I'm a coach and I'm up 42 and I got these guys in the game, I could I could make it simple for everybody and call a vanilla defense. But that doesn't tell me how smart these guys are. Okay, I want to know what are they going to do 
you know, in a game situation, we put these stunts in for the whole team. It's not just for the first and second string guys. So 42 ends up making a play, but we execute this real good. So this was good. This, this young, these guys are executing this stunt and, and we get a guy that comes clean. So that's the point I'm making is just because you're in the game late, that doesn't mean we're going to run vanilla defenses, simple stuff. Because that doesn't tell me what the heck you, you know as a football player. You follow me? I'm following you. Nice play by guy. All right, here's uh, Donegal in the game, third and 11. Is that Donegal in the game? Yeah, that's a big fella. Number four, yeah. Big cannon. Get this first down. He'll get that. That's a young guy, right? Yes, uh, Frederick Moore from St. Louis. You know what, Danny? To, uh, next year, he'll get the first down. He'll 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 have a better understanding of where he is on the field because he learned he learned from that football play right there. Okay, now I'm I'm looking at our punt team here, and it, I, I question some of this stuff. You know, we got two gunners. Okay, that's what we believe in. Okay, you got to have two fast guys. They're allowed to cover the punt. Okay, now you've got other guys that are protecting, and these the other there's only two other guys that are getting a release. See, I don't, I really have questions about these 300 pounders. You got three 300 pound guys in the game. These guys ain't covering no punt. They ain't making no tackle. I just wonder what the thinking is on that. I mean, we've been pretty good at our punt has been good, and that's what a lot of guys do. It's just something that is is of concern when I when I think about having these three hundred pound guys in the game. Are they they're not covering no dang punt? But we get four guys there, you know, which is what we want to have. But if somebody gets held up, you know, it's a problem. That's Jay Harbaugh. Yeah. Now here we are. Here's Michigan on defense. I just talked about Michigan State. We got no contain here. But I don't know if I can blame the kid. Because it's like, God, we got, you know, they're, they're pinning our guy in just like we pin their guy in. You know, we, we got this kid right here. He's going to get pinned in. But look where he's lined up. It's like, as he, look, I mean, this guy can run all day. So, I don't know. I don't like it. Either the scheme or the kid screwed up. True freshman, Cam Brand. I mean, like. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I've seen this. I've seen us do some things like that that I question. Uh, here's Orgy in the game. Yeah, let's go. And this stuff is hard to defend, Danny. We got jet motion to uh, the defense is right, and then we run power, quarterback power away. All right, we pull the uh, – Woo! Who are we pulling here? The center in the backside tackle? Yeah, center in the backside tackle. So – this play is tough to defend. Uh, it's really tough to defend if you got a quarterback that can throw it. So that that's the thing. I don't know. Understand why we're not running this package with him or run it with Tuttle. But this is the kind of play, Denny, that you run against Ohio State and you run it against Penn State, but you run it with JJ to have to win a football game. You follow me? But yeah. you don't run it. You don't run it against Indiana when you're up. Uh, you know, you just don't run it against Indiana. You run this against Ohio State or Penn State with JJ when we got to win a football game because that play is tough to defend. And so it's the play is in, and the, and I guarantee you we've worked on it with the the you know the first string guys. And it's uh, you know just just something that's in there, and uh, first time we've seen it all year. This kid's getting better. This 91. What's his name? Brant. Cam Cameron. I, I can see him playing more physical, more physical at the line of scrimmage, getting game reps. And then we get a good tackle up here. Good left shoulder tackle. Young guy in the game. 33. Great job. Recognizing run. You know, it's the last play of the game, man. But this kid. This play right here for this kid, Danny. Yeah. This this play will it will have an impact on that kid's attitude for the next year. This fresh is he a freshman? No, he's a senior. But oh, okay. he, well, but it's it, it all works in. That was uh, a German green. Okay. So well, anyway, it, Matt, it, that's but good. The whole, yeah. 
the whole thing about that scar is McBurrows and German Green were the ones that were injured in the tunnel last That's year. Right. McBurrows got an interception and Green there with the tackle to close things down right at the end. Poetic justice is what it was. Yeah, that's good. So this is a hell of a play. Anyway, I, I have it. I have my, uh, I have a, a, a question here about the plan. Okay. The game, these are the stuff I had to worry about. Coaches have to worry about and especially high school coaches. Okay. What's your plan right now? Okay. The game ended last year. We had issues, right? You know, uh, no, I just wonder had issues. Yeah. I, I, I get it, but you still have to, I, you still have to be concerned. Obviously they're, you know, they're letting our guys, they're treating them like men. They're treating them like we should be able to go and shake these guys' hands like, like it should be. And apparently uh, this guy's eight. No, they're coming after him and he, he keeps swinging. So that's all I got. Denny. Uh, yeah. We should have known about Michigan state after the game, you know, Harlan Barnett was like, at one point they said uh, he was giving his guys a lot of freedom and they were late to some meetings and things. And he said he had to tighten that down a little bit. You got guys coming in late for meetings during the season. That's not a good sign. No, that that's, that's unheard of. That's unheard of. You just don't. And he do said it. he was giving them a break. You know, oh, you guys were getting late and giving them a break. No. Didn't no, they, weakness is not the answer, man. No, that's it. You got some final points, Scar. You know, no, Danny, we're just uh, let's be smart in this. Uh, I said I went, to, I went to practice, and it was just a, just, just a brilliant structure, organization, uh, highly motivated, uh, great teaching. You know, we really got ready for the, the the crowd noise. They, you know, everybody does this. They got the big speakers bumping, and and it, 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 it ain't no joke. Those speakers ain't no joke, man. You don't want to be sitting near those speakers, so. A lot of work with uh, crowd noise and uh, just a, a real creative structure of the offense that, you know, they, they'll go special teams, then they'll go offense, then they go defense, then they come back to special teams. They, they, they had some good hitting in there. It was on a Tuesday. Not a lot, just enough. You know, you got to get, you got to get some good smacking in there. You can't just go in, in, in shorts and shoulder pads. You got to get some good smacking in there. A couple reps. It was, it was just enough, and I think our, our team played like it, man. Well, this morning, Scott, I don't know if it's been like this yet, but uh, there was frost on the grass, and Michigan, you know, has a bye week, and the remaining games, Purdue, that is on the 4th of November. It'll be a little bit colder, night game, and then November 11th at Penn State, easy to say, seven days after that, the 18th in Happy Valley, and then the 25th. You know, that's what the Thanksgiving weekend and you've got uh, Michigan, Ohio State at noon. So it's uh, it's happening. November's the time you win championships. This team, uh, they they seem they look really focused in. And, and this looks like uh, the best team in the in the country. And, you know, they're going to get a chance to prove it in November. Yeah. Bo, Bo used to talk about this time of year was when you saw upsets because of the grind of the season and people are mentally weak. You know, you saw North Carolina get beat by, by Virginia and uh, this ain't happening with Michigan. You got to get your mind. If you know, if you're playing, if you're a player there, you got to say, all right, I got five games. I got to be, I got to be fired up for five football games. And then there's a big gap between the, the, the championship stuff, but that's, that's how you get, you know, you got to get your mind. That's the, that's the, where we're at. And I got to have myself mentally, physically, emotionally ready to go for five weeks. And, and you, 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 that's where some people just can't do it. They, and they, they lit up and they have a bad week of practice and then they screw around and get beat like North Carolina did. This would be like you if you ever go out to Vegas for the World Series of Poker Scar. You'd be there like the third day grinding away. You'd be, you'd be four out for the money. And a lot of people would be getting there. You'd just grind it. You know, you got to focus in play your game to be able to get into the money, you know? That's right. Mental toughness, baby. Anyway, this stuff will be over with Jim here. Hopefully soon we're rolling. Uh, things are good. Uh, take kids, get the little time off and um, couldn't be a better uh, day to be a Michigan Wolverine. It's great to be a Michigan Wolverine, right, Danny? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I would, I would imagine, you know, <laughs> eight, no coming off a 49, nothing win and into a bye week. You got a couple uh, hours to yourself. Scar, enjoy your week. Look forward to talking with you. You got a bye week on Saturday. 
Uh, we'll talk with you next uh, Monday. Smash that like button. We always love comments. And, um, hey, that's it. We'll, we'll talk to you coming up on Wednesday. All right. Go Blue.